when you're laying pavers, there's a few things you need to get right for a successful job. The first thing is the way you handle them. You'll notice when they turn up onto the job site, they're well packed, and there's a good reason for that, because you don't want to scratch them or chip them, so make sure you just handle them very carefully. And what I like to do when I'm stacking them near where I'm working is go back to back and top to top. Now, the paver we're using is made by Boral. It's a 400 by 400 by 40 mil paver from their coast range. And this particular one is called Shell, and it's a lovely, classy look. And what you'll notice with these, and you do get this with a lot of the Boral pavers, is they have these lugs on the side. And there's a very good reason for that, because when you're laying with any paver, you should always have a gap between the pavers into which your grout sand goes and that will prevent any chipping and also keep your lines nice and straight. So those lugs just help when you're laying the pavers. Now, another good tip for you, in a job like this or any job, wherever possible, always try and lay along the longest straight edge and always keep an eye on the lines. They're the things that really stand out. These lines through here where your grout sand will go, always try and keep the job nice and square. If you get it all offset, it looks very ordinary and very unprofessional. And when you actually lay the pavers, just get them down nice and flat, like so. And keep an eye on them. And what I like to do too, is just get your level or the straight edge, or for bigger jobs, set up a string line, and just put the level on the side of the pavers, and you'll soon find out if you're losing your way a little bit, and you can just nudge the paper over and keep them nice and straight, and then you can keep going. Okay, now that the papers are all down, you just need to check all the lines and make sure the papers are nice and square, and then come through with the rubber mallet and just tap them down so they're all nice and level. All right, I'm near the end of the paving job now, just tapping down a few pavers, and here's a great tip for you. If you're using a light-coloured paver, like these classy boral numbers, or maybe sandstone, always go with a white rubber mallet, not the big black one like this. And the reason for that, pretty obvious. With the white rubber, you won't mark the pavers with the black rubber, which is good for dark pavers, but on the light colours, you'll get nasty rubber marks on them. So. Go the white on the white and the black on the dark colours. And here's another good tip for you. When you're tapping them down, you need to have your hand on the paver to stop it moving around. And if it's a bit late in the day and you're getting a bit tired, and this has happened to me heaps of times, you come in there and you'd be surprised how easy it is to actually bash your thumb with the mallet. And trust me, that hurts. It's not too bad with a light white mallet like this one. I'm telling you, if you get stung by the black mamba, you're going to know about it, it'll bring tears to your eyes. And that raises another good point. If it's late in the day, whether you're operating power tools or whatever, even the rubber mallets, and you're getting a bit tired, that's when accidents can happen. So if you feel yourself getting tired, maybe it's best to pull up stumps and start fresh tomorrow morning. Where if you've got an exposed edge on your paving, like we have around here where it meets the turf, you need to contain that with a collar or haunch of mortar or concrete. Now, that's very important. And what I always like to do is just bring it up to the top of the paper where it's at the joint. And that way, when you put your sand in, the sand won't wash out. It doesn't have to be too extreme in this case because the turf's going to come up and meet it. But the collar or haunch will lock in the sand, lock in the pavers, and then we're ready to move on to the next job.